Have you ever found that you need to drill a hole? <laughs> nice. But you don't want to completely blow out the rear end or whatever's behind it. Just take a socket, preferably a deep, but whatever you need to get the job done, put it on your bit. That way you can just car a ramrod at home and not have to worry about penetration. I know I don't have to worry about over penetration. Ever. And instead of focusing on any logical project like making it run, <laughs> drive, function properly, not interested, we're going to be installing a car audio system. Now, if you haven't been around here before, this is our 1969 VW Beetle with an LS swap. Just take a second to take all that in. Oh yeah, there she is. And once we build some custom speaker panels, well, we're going to be installing these Hyanka, here it's nice this time of year, six and a half inch full range speakers. This is the ES65, which stands for 6.5 two-way coaxial speaker. And while they're rated at 500 max, that's, let's be real, that's, that's a conceptual max. Now, they do sound just fine being pumped 150, 200 watts through a four channel amp, but I don't, I don't, that, that, let's be real, that's where, that's where they're at. Up close, the cone material actually has a machined look or ridges for our pleasure. I appreciate that it, you know, doesn't look like something that came off Battlestar Galactica cyberpunk trailer. Now, when making custom panels and other related garbage, I love to take the original things, even if they're in, well, not so good a shape, and then remaking them out of cardboard. Now, that usually saves you a ton of time getting angles like this and curves that eh, just be a pain in the butt otherwise. And since it's cardboard, it's really easy to notch for all your new shapes. Now, once you've got a reasonably good cardboard template, <laughs> transfer that garbage to wood. I've chosen this wood right here because, well, it was in my shed, so that's half the battle. I didn't have to go anywhere. But the other reason is, I don't really like MDF in my old age. A, it feels like you're just sanding Hodgkin's lymphoma into your body. But also, I kind of like plywood. It's kind of forgiving. If you mess something up, then you will. Yeah, it's pretty easy to patch. I like it. Now for our new speaker, if we would just install it on this panel, well, it hit the back. So unfortunately, we got to add some speaker trim rings to push everything farther apart. That way we get the space so our back of our speaker just doesn't collide with the body panel. Now, if you've got a cry cut machine, you can actually put templating on cheat mode. Just draw your part in CAD or whatever program you're using and turn it into a sticker. We used to do this on cars that had really weird speaker designs we were adapting to but didn't really want to waste the time to make like a master template and store it somewhere. We just threw the file in our desktop junk drawer and printed it out whenever we needed it. Now, once you've got everything rough drafted and rough cut, well, it's time to hit it with a sander, maybe a little bit of quick wood. I like using the epoxy wood repairs now instead of just like the squeezable tubes that air dry because I found some of those react to when the, uh, you, they get hit with spray adhesive. They don't like it and they swell up. So just to prevent that from happening, started using epoxy a little bit more. Or you can top coat all your wood pieces with just a random sprayable primer. I found that actually makes it easier for your eye holes to see height and depth differences and get any weird variations out. And then you wouldn't even have to worry about a wood filler getting wet and expanding. Now, if you're gonna be upholstering and vinyling your panels, <laughs> neat. Well, we've got a good video about that. I'll blink it somewhere, but it'll, it'll, it'll oh, right there. Uh, whoa, that's huge. Nice, three inches. But you should always route your edges. The reason being is when you roll over vinyl, if it doesn't have that routed edge, well, it kind of bunches up and you've got to fix that on the top edge and it just, it's going to wrinkle and you're going you're gonna to be unhappy. If I was doing a panel and I wanted a more modern look, I'd give it a 45 degree angle. If I wanted something that looked a little bit more traditional, I'd get the biggest round over bit that Home Depot, Harbor Freight sells. Go with that. But Matt, how are you going to mount these panels is what you're probably saying to yourself. Well, I choose the I I U T I O. It's a fancy word for a thread insert tool, <laughs> probably in Chinese. Well, instead of using Christmas trees, which got some big waller out holes, most people would use screws. But how do you get a screw into a big wallered out hole, you ask? Well, install a thread insert into there, and then you can just bolt your panels on and off. You could choose whatever hardware size you want. You can get tiny screws, but I found that a quarter inch stainless steel button head screw. Hmm. <laughs> well, that. That looks real nice in there. Now, it's time to assemble your upholstered speaker contraption. Well, together. We're gonna start by cutting the vinyl out of this thing and then we're gonna screw these two halves together. And then after a quick run of the hardware store, we got some screws that are just long enough to go through the layer without blasting through the other side. Well, we pre-drill and pop them in there. 
always mark and pre-drill your speakers. The reason is that when you sink these screws in, a lot of times the screws are really close to the edge and it'll just pop the plywood or MDF chunk right off. And uh, speaker surrounds. The sheer number of speakers that were brand new that I've destroyed by running an impact as my bit slipped off and ramrodded into the surround because I didn't take the time to pre-drill things is, um, ah, we're at least on a dozen. <laughs> so uh, don't be that guy. And remember that your speaker cover, well, it actually uses a different set of holes of what you have to mount to directly. So if you don't look and see which ones line up, well, you might get to drill them all multiple, it, you're gonna be fine. I, I have total faith in us. Wow, well, would you just look at that? I wouldn't say it's my best work, but I also wouldn't say it's, no, it's de no, that's, that's definitely the best work actually. Now that I say it out loud and look at it, yeah, this is probably some of the best work. So while most speakers are okay on the eye holes, well, you need to put your ear holes on them to actually get a good sound reverberation scale is basically what scientists say. So let's take a listen to them. mosquitoes. Now that I've got some seat time, <laughs> okay. With these speakers, Hyanka, it's nice this time of year. Man, these are actually a really good budget speaker. I'm impressed. We have some Pioneer cheapies in the back of our 63 Buick Riviera just for rear Dunk a dunk, cheap set of Pioneer speakers, and these blow them out of the water. Just look at them. We're gonna use our eye holes for this one because it doesn't have a battery, but imagine what they sound like. Now, in a future video, we're gonna be building front kick panels and installing the two way component set. So I have high expectations for that, but these little guys pumped about 50 RMS through a little tiny four channel amp. Quite impressive. Welcome to my face at the end of the video. If you like this garbage, well, you know what to do and the place to do it in it, probably. If you don't, well, then, then, then don't do it, I guess. Now I make these videos specifically for viewers like you and because I'm kind of bored. So you know it's the best content coming to you, but we've got some really good stuff coming eventually. Besides installing the two-way components of these speakers, we're gonna be working on the cooling system of the VW Beetle LS swap. As you can see, well, it uh, needs a little bit of love, but we're gonna be doing a little science-y experimentation on the smallest radiator that we can install the coolest 5.3. So, if that interests you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>